Braxina is an associate fellow at the Royal United Services Institute and is with me in the studio. And Karim Sajapur is from the Middle East program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and is in Washington. Uh, welcome uh, to you both. Barak, let me come to you first of all. Uh, is it the right time to ease sanctions against Iran and say, yep, this is, there's a good deal on the table? Look, um, it's really bet the international community is between a rock and a hard place because on one hand, if you, re if you dismantle the sanctions regime, that perhaps can embolden Iran to continue building up its nuclear process. On the other hand, even if the status quo is maintained, there is a great risk of a polynuclear Middle East. You have Saudi Arabia eyeing a nuclear program. You have it. Egypt eyeing a nuclear program. At a moment's notice, Saudi Arabia can receive a nuclear program from Pakistan. So you're talking about a pre-World War II nation-state empire landscape, but nuclear. And that could lead to regional implosion. So you think you've got to maintain the sanctions against Iran for fear that other nations will... There'll be a kind of nuclear arms race. But not only that, even within Iran itself, um, Khamenei, who is the strongest man in Iran, is actually the weakest man in Iran because he has to balance competing interests between the Revolutionary Guard on one hand and um, Rouhani on the other. And if he goes too much either way, if he makes concessions to the international community, the Revolutionary Guard will be furious for being sidelined. And if he goes the route of the Revolutionary Guard and he makes no concessions, then he devastates the Iranian economy that's so contingent on Western instruments. Karim, let me come to you now. What do you think the prospects are for some kind of deal? Because presumably you wouldn't have had quite so many talks over quite such a short time frame involving John Kerry and the like, unless there was a real prospect of a deal. Um, John, I think it's looking better than not that we will reach an interim deal this week. Um, but I think it's important to mention what we're talking, talking about is really a, a short-term interim deal which will we'll maybe bring some calm for a few months, but this is certainly not going to uh, resolve the nuclear dispute with Iran. And I think, you know, what Barack Sina talked about, the dismantling of sanctions, um, that's, not, that's certainly not what's being proposed for this interim deal. What we're talking about from the P5 plus one end is uh, unfreezing some of Iranian assets in foreign banks, uh, and in exchange, um, Iran will be expected to, to, to freeze its nuclear program, not make forward progress. In order to reach a final deal with Iran, it certainly will require much more uh, sanctions relief on the U.S. and, and European end, um, and it will require much greater um, um, compromises from Iran on the nuclear file. And so I would say, in short, that I'm optimistic about a deal, an interim deal this week, I'm not terribly optimistic that we will we'll get a final deal in the months and years ahead. So if you're saying uh, an interim deal doesn't matter that much, why are Israel and Saudi Arabia so alarmed by it? Well, it's, it's partly the momentum here, the, the concern that we have um, an incredibly draconian sanctions regime now in place. And if we begin to ease up on that, it will breathe, uh, it will give uh, Iran a new financial lifeline and maybe the, the uh, partnering countries like, like China, uh, India, Japan, they will start to continue to do business with Iran. And if Iran in six months has, uh, is in not such dire financial straits, they may not feel the same sense of urgency to make nuclear compromises. So, I think you know there there, there is valid uh, concern and skepticism from neighboring countries, whether that's Saudi Arabia or Israel. Um, but you have to look at what the alternatives are. And I think the White House and State Department has made a pretty good case that um, you know in foreign policy you're never dealing with ideal options. And and if we can reach some type of an interim deal, which at least um, prevents Iran from making forward progress without really uh, with, while maintaining, as they say, the, the broad okay. architecture of the sanctions regime, that could be the best deal we can get. All right, let me just come to you finally and say, how consistent do you think the United States has been in its attitude uh, towards Iran and, you know, where the red lines are? 
Look, I think that you've got a really sclerotic White House at the moment. You had a while ago Hillary T Clinton speaking about containment. Then you had President Obama speak about prevention. They were saying this both at the same time. Now you've got the White House having scaled back from its original intent that Iran shouldn't continue to enrich uranium to saying that Iran shouldn't have the bomb. Um, we have to, we, it, this is an issue not simply of process and interim deals. We have to bear in mind that in 1994, North Korea won a whole host of freeze deals with the United States on its nuclear program, and they, they actually proceeded to cheat the international community, benefiting from material deals, diplomatic deals, huge hosts of concessions made by the international community. What Iran can continue to do now is, Rouhani already boasted once that he managed to exploit the international community and continue to build its nuclear program, so history may repeat itself. We shall see. We shall watch. And, of course, stay with us here on BBC World News and we'll tell you what actually happens. Uh, Baraksina and Karim Sajapur, both of you, thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us.